Hey crew, welcome back to my channel for another video. For those of you who are new, my name is Bridgette. Um, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. I am a New York City based flight attendant and I am going back to work. Today we are working a three day international trip. I am going to a location that I've never been before and that is Edinburgh. Or, yeah, Edinburgh. So, as usual, um, it's time to check the weather. We're going to Scotland. 60 degrees. Cloudy. <laughs> Am I surprised? No. So, um, I need to pack my bag. It is noon local time. I have a 5 p.m. commuting flight. My report time's not until close to 9 p.m. And yeah, so let's get to work. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass that like stocking. Just joshing. I'ma spend this holiday locking. My body got rid of them toxins. Sports in the top end. I can put a ball in the end zone, put a bad in the friend zone. This shit sound like an intro jet song. Give me that tempo. Oh, so cool, get full with the shit. Hey crew, please excuse my appearance. Um, I have just gotten to the hotel in Scotland, in Edinburgh. Or is it Edinburgh? I don't know. Ooh. Um, and it is 11.15 local time. I am about to, per usual, um, take a shower and unlike Gatwick I'm going to take a nap um crudy briefing first of all let me start off by saying we almost didn't make it here um when we got to the aircraft we boarded up the flight was not 100% full it was actually pretty light um, I worked in the back. I'm doing this all out of order. Ooh, I look greasy. Excuse my appearance, you guys. Um, so we boarded up. Like I said, the flight was not full. And we're waiting for them to close the boarding door. And one of the pilots says to me, hey, they're having... Well, let me rewind again. While we were doing one of our duties on board, the power went out nothing out of the ordinary it happens sometimes but nine times out of ten it kicks back in immediately so i didn't think anything of it because like i said nine times out of ten it kicks back in immediately well this time it took a little bit longer but it also didn't alarm me because it happens so we finish our duties and then i go up to the front to see like you know why isn't the boarding door closed you guys are dirty hold on I was in the boarding door closed and one of the pilots is like, hey, um, they're having a problem with the APU, which is the auxiliary power unit. I can't really explain to you what that does. I just know what it is. Um, so if you are an aviation um, enthusiast or you know what it is, please comment down below to explain for everyone. So... He was like, something's wrong with it, and they're trying to figure out how to fix it, but if they cannot fix it, we will have to cancel the flight. I was like, excuse me? Cancel the flight? That's not even an option. So we sat there, we were delayed probably 40 minutes, and thankfully they were able to fix the problem, and then we took off, and we got here. When I say these were the best passengers I've ever experienced, they were so nice, they were so polite, they did not want anything, which could have also been because of how late the flight was, and they slept the whole flight, we were offering them drinks and snacks, and they, excuse me, they literally did not want anything. So, this flight was a breeze, coming back, or going back, I should say, to the States is supposed to be 100% full, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, there's not much to do a crew debriefing on because the flight was so uneventful. Please, I hope I'm not jinxing myself by saying that. Um, enough of me rambling. I am about to go take a shower. I'm not going to bore you guys with a B-roll of that. 
and I'll probably speak to you guys later. I'm not promising that I'm going to explore, but fun fact, I don't know if I said this earlier when I was opening the vlog. It's my first time in Scotland. Um, so yeah, uh, that's about it. So I'll see you in the next clip. Good morning. Today has started off very eventful already. About two hours ago, I was <laughs> literally jumped out of my sleep. When I say jumped, you guys, like my heart was beating so fast. My hands were shaking. I couldn't even control it. Um, the fire alarm went off and I feel like I have, I don't even know what the, the word is to describe it, but trauma with any type of alarm because when it went off I instantly thought that I overslept and that they were calling me because I had to get up for the trip but then while I'm like waking up because it literally jumped me out of my sleep I'm like I don't recognize that alarm whose alarm is that so I you know I'm trying to get up I'm looking for my glasses and as I'm getting up, I'm like, oh, that's a fire alarm. So I get up and the fire alarm goes off. So I said, okay, well then I'll go back to sleep. As soon as I sit back down, the fire alarm goes back on. <coughs> Excuse me. So I get, go to my door and I look out the door and I see my crew member. She's like, it's the fire alarm. I'm like, come on, let's go, let's go get your, and I'm about to go. She's like, get your room key. I'm happy she said that because like I told you, I was frazzled, like, it literally jumped me out of my sleep so we're trying to get out and um figure out where the exit is you guys it was just a whole ordeal so we stood outside in the cold for probably like 20 minutes and then the fire truck came i guess they did whatever they had to do and excuse me we came back in but after all of that, I obviously could not go back to sleep. So, I'm exhausted. Um, I feel like I've been living in a bout of exhaustion. But enough rambling. Um, I'm about to start getting ready for work. I'll see you guys in the next clip. Hey crew, so um, I'm not sure if this vlog is going to be a vlog by itself because I didn't do anything. I may just combine it with my next trip that starts tomorrow. But it's been two days since the end of the edinburgh trip um when i say everything fell apart the last day on go home day everything fell apart let me get my notes ready for you guys um so yeah i told you that the fire alarm went off in the morning when i was getting ready so i'm sleeping peacefully i was in a deep good sleep you guys and then i'm hearing this blaring sound and you know it took me probably what was seconds but it felt like forever to kind of what's the word um basically notice that that's an alarm sound at first I kind of felt like it was in my dream but then it was too loud so I like jump up like literally jump up out of the bed and this is where I know that I have like PTSD with my airline and alarms because the first thing that came to my mind knock on wood um I've never missed pickup but the first thing that came to my mind was that I miss pickup so I'm thinking it's like an alarm which doesn't make sense I'm thinking it's an alarm that is waking me up for pickup because I'm late and once again that felt like minutes of me being in that frenzy but it probably was seconds until I put two and two together and I'm like oh my gosh that's not an alarm that's the fire alarm I was thinking it was a phone alarm so now I'm still kind of frozen and this is a good example of you know people say oh if an emergency happened if this happened if that happened I would do this I would do that you never know what you're going to do until you're actually in the moment and I feel like being jumped out of your sleep is even worse because you're not like coherent it's taking you a little bit to you know get it together so I like sit there and I'm not moving and then I'm like I need to get up so I have to find my glasses as you guys can see I wear glasses and contacts so I get up and um as I'm getting up to put my shoes on the alarm goes off 
so I'm about to get back in the bed because I'm so tired literally as I sit back down to get back into the bed the alarm goes back off so I make my way to the door to see if I can see anyone else outside because I didn't know if it was only my room that the alarm was going off and all throughout this I told you I was jumped out of my sleep so my adrenaline was running my hands were shaking so bad like I'm holding my face and my hands are just like shaking like this it was so bad so I look at the people I don't see anyone and then something told me to open the door as I open the door I see one of my crew members outside in the hallway and she's like there's a fire it's a fire alarm like we have to leave so I'm literally about to walk out the door I'm still half asleep she's like get your room key get your room key so I turn back in to get my room key left my phone left my passport all of my identification everything i just walked out of the room didn't even bring a jacket because it was cold there so we're trying to evacuate um once again she's half asleep too so we're trying to find the exit and we finally start going towards the exit and there was like a family that was um following behind us and they were trying to go in the elevator and my crew member was like no like you can't use the elevator it's going to be shut off if there's a fire so we she's like where's the stairs where are the stairs and i'm like let's follow the green man like the little green symbol i'll put a, a diagram of what i'm talking about because we have it on the aircraft as well so we follow that we go down the stairs and it takes us to like this little corridor where there's no one um, and we're like, are we the only people who heard the fire alarm? Like, what's going on? But one thing I should note, um, when I initially came outside, it did smell like if something was burning. To me, it smelled more of like an electrical burn and not like something like a cloth or fabric or something like that was on fire. And it was very strong on our side of the hotel. The farther we got away from our room, the less we were smelling it. So we get outside, you know, all the crew members were not on the same floor or the same hallway. We were all dispersed everywhere, but we we met up in a certain spot and um, we waited in the cold and then we were able to go back into the hotel about probably about 30 minutes after that but at that point it was only an hour until we really had to get up and get ready to go back downstairs for pickup so I just laid there tried to calm my nerves until I had to get up and start getting ready and that's when I told you guys that the fire alarm went off now cool I thought that was going to be it for the day I said my little thing of you know hopefully this isn't a precursor or a sign of what the day was going to be like we're going to send out positive vibes it's going to be a good day boy was I wrong we get on the plane um I was galley by choice and we're setting up and one of the other crew members is doing the pre-departure service in first class she either got knocked or sh her arm hit something and the tray of sparkling wine and orange juice spills all over her and I felt so bad because she literally came back drenched in orange juice so we're like oh my gosh like can I help you we're trying to help her clean it up and at that point I should have named that that flight was the flight of spills because from then on everything was spilling we're doing service up front a whole um like it's not a canister but you know those like mugs that they put like hot liquids in to keep them warm whole of that spills in the galley while we're doing service up front um then we spilled red wine another crew member spilled red wine it was just stuff was just spilling off flight but you know what i didn't let that make the day bad i was like you know what we're gonna get there it's gonna be no problem i'm gonna commute home boom bam bim I listed for my commuting flight. It had 20 something open seats. I was number one on the list. Then I went to number four with like 17 or 18 open seats. I was like, cool, no problem. Then I went to number 11. Then we get to New York. I get to my gate and they're starting to delay flights, but I'm not thinking anything of it. I just thought that that one flight that was delayed was a uh, isolated, you know, event. We get on the plane, we push back, we sit, we sit, we sit. Now I'm like, okay, this isn't good. We sit on that plane. They're like, um, you know, the airport is closed down. Our route is closed down because inclement weather is moving in. We'll have to wait for it to move out. And then hopefully they will open back up our route. Well, that did not happen. We sat on the plane for so long that we met the um, FAA rule where you can't sit on the plane for a certain amount of over a certain amount of hours before having to go back to the gate. We go back to the gate. Pilots time out. So they delay the flight until the next morning, which was yesterday. So I'm like, no, I can't stay here. The flights after that were all canceled. So I am like, okay, think quick, think fast. What are you going to do? 
let's get on the train i'm going to try and find a hopefully affordable train to get back home I found an $80 train, but the problem was leaving JFK and getting to Penn Station, it was like five something and that train left at 645. I didn't want to pay the $80 and then not make it in time. So I was trying to hold off until at least I got to Jamaica Station off of the air train because then I just had to ride the Long Island Railroad right to Penn Station and then I would have been able to gauge, you know, would I be able to make it in time. Well, that one was still a little too close for comfort for me. It was kind of giving me anxiety. So I was like, you know what, I'll take the second option, which was probably, I think, $40 no $20 more it was like $100 when I went to go pay for it it jumped to $140 so you know I make it to um, Jamaica Station I pay for it I had cough up the $140 because I'm ready to go home I did not sleep because of that whole fire um, oh this battery is about to die so if it turns off I'll pick up wherever I left off um, because of the whole fire alarm thing so I pay for the I'm on the Long Island Railroad I pay for my train ticket and I always double check before I pay that I'm paying for the right day right time because you know you don't want to deal with having to now pay more fees to correct the mistake I did that double check triple check I'm sitting on the Long Island Railroad now to Penn Station oh I have to rewind I pay for my ticket to get on the Long Island Railroad I'm waiting for the track to show up it says track number seven I go down the elevator to track number seven. Something told me to look back on the app again. Now it says track number two and I have one minute until the train takes off. So I'm going up the escalator, running over from track seven to track two. Now I have to carry my bags down the stairs because the escalator only goes up. Trying to run, the train is there. Run, run, run. I almost fall with my bags, hurt my ankle. Luckily, like one of the workers saw me running and he waited and he's like, it's okay, you made it. I just want to make sure you're going to Penn Station and you're not on the wrong train. I was like, yes, out of breath. Get on the train, paid for my ticket to on Amtrak. And like I told you, I was double checking. I look, why does it say I pay for the 645 train? And at that time it was 655. No, it was six. It was 645. I my heart dropped if <laughs> someone wasn't if that wasn't shambles I don't know what it is like I could have really burst into tears at that point but what was it really going to do it wasn't going to solve any of my problems so my heart drops I'm like no I checked I double checked I triple checked how is it that it's the 645 train so when I get to I'm like okay well I'll have to sort it out when I get to Penn Station when I get to Penn Station it indeed was a 645 train that I paid for, but when I paid for it, it said it was leaving at 714. I got to Penn Station at 655 or something like that. Both were right, I should say. It originally was a 645 train, but it was delayed. I paid for it for 714, which was the new projected departure time. It didn't leave until like 730, but all of that was just too much. And at that point, I hadn't eaten anything. So I was starving. I was anxious to go get in line at any food place because I didn't want them to announce what track it was on and then me miss the train. So like I went to Walgreens, got something, but I was like, this is not going to keep me, hold me over. Then I went to Chopped. I was afraid, went back to the like open area, then went back to Chopped to stand in line. And of course, when I get in line at Chopped, then they announce what track my train is on. So I'm trying to rush, 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 get my salad, get in the long line to get on the train. Of course this wants to interrupt me. Get on the train, sit down. Luckily I had the road to myself. Luckily I had the seat to myself, got on the train, rode the train to um, BWI, and then made my way home from that. And that is the end of that trip, which was very traumatic. So that's to show you a lot of stuff doesn't go as planned. I always stress you need to have plan A, B, C, D, E, all the way to Z. I didn't have those, but I thought quick on my toes and was able to um, find my way home, even though it was very expensive. All right. If this is the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Um, as always, stay safe and see you soon. If it's not, then I will see you in the next clip, which is the next trip. So 